Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Brotato, an absolutely wonderful and glorious game where you, a potato, must face off hordes of alien mutants in an arena. As the rounds progress, your potato evolve, you can hold more guns, you can even get an RPG. Now, we've exploited this game in the past for some absolutely silly results, but today, we're going to go even further beyond and show off a video game exploit that is absolutely ridiculous and horrifically overpowered. If you've ever played Brotato before, trust me, you're never going to be able to see the game again after you discover this exploit. So, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you're sat back, relaxed, you're nice and comfortable, you have a warm cup of tea in hand, and let's dive into this video. But first, a word from our sponsors over at Surfshark VPN. That's right, they're back to sponsor more videos. Surfshark is a virtual private network that keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of your information that is sent between your device and the internet. This, of course, has many glorious uses, like the ability to change your virtual location. With the click of a button, you can be in a different country. This allows you to do many things like bypass censorship and international copyright laws. If you're annoyed that your favorite YouTube video was blocked, well guess what? In some countries, it's not. But that's not all. Surfshark also secures your online data. Meaning if you're using public Wi-Fi, you can rest assured knowing that no one is snooping in with their magical high-tech packet sniffers. It can even be used to block ads, which uh, YouTube appears to be focusing on quite a lot lately. So if you want to give it a try yourself, then the wonderful folks at Surfshark have got a brilliant holiday deal for you. If you enter the promo code SPIFFING, you get up to six months free. And there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk for giving it a try. So what are you waiting for? Go find that lovely link in the description below. Thank you for the sponsorship, and now onwards with the video. First things first, we need to pick a character for today's run. Now the last time we did a Brotato, we played the Forester, so I'm going to be doing something slightly different today by playing as the Farmer. They are a relatively relatively simple character whose entire focus is on the economy, and as a British individual, that resonates strongly with me. But before I explain our actual build, let's go into the game, see what it's all about, and win our first round. Welcome into Wave 1. We have a bunch of enemies running at us, but we have a lovely little pruner that we can uh, use to poke out their eyes. And yes, that does actually work in terms of fending off all of these evil beasties. Come on, I want that tree down. Yes, I got rid of the tree. Lovely. Splendid. Right, so as the farmer, we have a few key stats. We want to keep track of, namely the harvesting statistic. Harvesting gives us materials and experience at the end of every wave. It effectively replaces the materials that we get from actually killing the enemies. And as we are the farmer, this stat actually increases by 3% at the end of every wave. So the sooner you can get this up nice and high, the better. But when it comes to our actual build, we could of course be focusing on doing more damage. I'm instead going to be going for luck. For our first few weapons, we want more pruners, because pruners spawn gardens, and gardens drop consumable little cactuses. And every Every time we pick up one of those bad boys, we get plus one harvesting. I can then re-roll the shop and buy another pruner, re-roll it again, and is there another pruner here? Eh, no. Do I risk another roll? Ah, why not? Come on. Yes, it's a fourth pruner. This is a good start indeed. Now our exploit won't actually kick in for a little while yet, so all we need to do is just focus on upgrading our base economy by having these gardens and harvesting all of their lovely materials for our very own profits. Now sometimes enemies can also drop materials, which is very good indeed, and occasionally we'll even get trees, and they will also be spawning materials for us. But at the end of wave two, we are now up to a harvesting rate of 52, which is very nice indeed. I'll be grabbing yet another luck upgrade. Now there are of course some heinous items in this game that we never take, for example coffee. <laughs> it might seem good on paper increasing your attack speed, but ladies and gentlemen, as a British person you must know drinking coffee is the most ultimate sin possible, and must always be resisted at every step. Unfortunately, I don't think we have any good rolls here, except uh, one more pruner and a lumberjack shirt. Right, so we've upgraded our potato with the lumberjack shirt, so we have a nice little top on, which is very jazzy. Right, wave three has been finished. We've upgraded one of our pruners to spawn more fruit, which is very jazzy indeed, and our harvesting statistic is up to 88, which, as you can imagine, pretty darn jazzy indeed. Although we are now facing off against ranged enemies, which are not fun at all, as it means I actually have to focus on dodging and things like that. But anyway, our early success is going well, and oh yes, a tree! Fantastic. The more trees we kill, also the more materials we get, which increases the cycle of success. Okay, and at the end of wave four, all of our weapons have pretty much been upgraded. We now have a bunch of blue pruners and even a purple pruner, which not only do more damage and attack faster, they also produce more fruit. This fruit is very useful. Unfortunately, we're still not getting enough trees, in my opinion, because that's exactly what our exploit actually needs to get rolling. So whilst our economy 
is very good and our character is very dangerous, we still haven't achieved my goal and my dream. Okay, good stuff. We leveled up twice. I'll naturally be going for luck and then uh, attack speed. Why not? Splendid. And then we can finally level up our last pruner. Have a very nice jabby crew. Oh my goodness, finally. Tree item. Yes. Oh, this is so useful. Oh dear. Right, we need the tree. And I do want the peacock as well for the additional experience. Oh yes, and why not? We'll even merge those pruners and get a final one. All right, splendid. A good shopping experience. Now if we're lucky, we should be getting a lot more of these jabby trees spawning. And when they do, we will be able to hopefully get started with our lovely exploit. Okay, first tree spawned. Unfortunately, it dropped a material and not a crate. We need crates, ladies and gentlemen. They give us free items. And due to the way the game is currently balanced, those free items can get very, very silly. Come on, come on, come on. Final tree. Oh my goodness, we hit three trees this round, none of which dropped a crate. Okay, we need more luck. All right, let's get some increased max HP, increased luck, and increased attack speed. Lovely. Our character is starting to look slightly more and more silly as we mount even more mutations and upgrades to them. I'm hoping that we get some lovely trees this wave and that my increased luck gives me a crate. Nope, first tree is a bust. Brilliant. Where is the second tree? Okay, here we go. Second tree, what have you got? Another fruit. No crates. Okay, there is a walking pinata. He dropped a crate. Lovely. Okay, fantastic. This could be the start of something brilliant. And there we go. Wave complete. So we get the crate and what this means is basically we can take an item from it. However, this crate unfortunately just dropped a weird ghost. Now, what we can do is we can take this item um, and then level up our character just a little bit. And before we do the final level up, if we return to the main menu and just click resume, it will take us back to the shop right before we started our wave. Now, this allows us to repeat the wave that we were just on. However, all of the benefits that we gained from actually beating the wave, like the item we got in the crate, doesn't persist. The game simply rolls itself back to the last save file and continues because, I mean, it would be absolutely stupid if you were able to keep items after reloading. But by reloading back, we should hopefully be able to respawn all of our trees, which should reset the rolls as to whether there's any crates inside of them. There we go, we just got a crate from a tree. And there is our lovely pinata man back on the map, which we are able to punch and pummel and get a second crate from. Lovely. Okay, we now have two crates from this wave. There we go. So that's the end of that wave, and now we get two crates. We get an elemental tank in the first one. This is unfortunate useless and a padding in the second. This is also relatively useless but we will grab it because it can get very very cheesy. And then let's re-roll and Goodness, I really wish we had some luck here rather than just damage. I think I want to re-roll and go for some more luck. There we go, plus 10 luck. Let's go for it. Oh, we've got the crown, which is really good. <laughs> okay, we'll grab that. Harvesting is increased by an additional 8% at the end of every round. We'll grab the lost duck for the additional luck. Let's roll. More trees spawn. Oh, this is finally the wave. This is the wave where it's gonna go well for us. All right, into wave 8 we go. I'm hoping that this is the wave where our lovely exploits can begin. There we go. There's a tree. No crate. Another tree. Once again, no crate. God damn it, game. You know what I want and you know I deserve it. Oh, there we go. Final tree. Come on, crate. Nope, just one crate. Okay, not the best. Still, we'll take the item, take this, and then once again, return to the main menu and restart this wave. I will do this wave over and over again until I get at least something I'm looking for. Okay, there we go. Two crates. Have we got a chance of this? Well, we've got a tardigrade, so I might take that and a tentacle. Oh, dear. All right, I'll keep them both anyway. We just need more luck. Our luck stat is so abysmally bad. Still, I think I can claw this back, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, two trees have spawned. Good start. There we go. Two crates. Good stuff. Good stuff. And I do believe that is the end of the round. Oh my goodness. Finally, we could actually do the exploit, ladies and gentlemen. For you see, this crate here has given me landmines. Now, what I'm going to do is take the landmines. And remember, we've just beaten wave nine. Very exciting indeed. Uh, but what I'm going to do is return to the main menu. Now, this logically will put us back into the shop before we even did this wave, which means we're back in the shop before we even got ourselves the landmines. All of our stats have been rolled back and everything. However, very interestingly, a landmine has spawned in on the ground right there. How curious indeed. But hang on a second, video game. I don't have any landmine in my inventory, so why on earth is it spawning in? Well, we've accidentally caused a glitch in the game because the game is unable to verify where that landmine actually came from. And whilst it's able to roll back all of my stats, it is not rolling back the landmine. This is, as you can imagine, very useful indeed as we now just got ourselves a free permanent item and we haven't technically finished wave 9 yet. You must, of course, be 
screaming at your screen right now going, Spiff, hang on a second. If you can pull this off once, does that mean you can pull it off again? Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, of course I can. For there are a handful of items in this game where if you're able to pick them up in a crate, you can keep them permanently. Anyway, once again, we'll return to the menu, resume and go on this wave once more. Once again, with our suspiciously located landmine. Yes, I'm sure the Geneva Convention is very happy to have that. Now, I love watching numbers go up. And what rising number is better to see than the likes on this video? And because I've been receiving such a bountiful harvest, I've decided to be very generous. I offer the first 10,000 people who like this video a delicious fruit, which will be sent via the Royal Skegness Delivery Service, guaranteeing it's ripe and fresh on arrival at some point in the next one to two working ice ages. Anyway, on with the economic mischief. Right, it's wave 12, ladies and gentlemen. It's just ended and uh, we have magically managed to pick up four crates, which means the odds of us actually hitting something we want is relatively high, although fertilizer bag is not it, little frog is also not it, and neither is a helmet! God damn it, game! Well, that's fine. This is uh, just one where we simply uh, re-roll back to the main menu again. <laughs> Still, uh, we do have some new items. We now have three sets of trees, which means our odds of getting trees is higher, uh, which in turn means the chances we get a crate is higher, which is very good indeed. We do have a couple of additional turrets and landmines lying around, but as I haven't sunk any stats into them at the moment, they're not the most overpowered. But hey, four crates already. Good stuff. Four seconds left. Any trees? Any trees? No trees? No crates. Okay, not bad, all things considered. Handcuffs. Um, very bad. We actually don't want the handcuffs. Metal plate? I mean, having some armor wouldn't be terrible. A clover for increased luck is good, and the metal detector is also good, because it gives us luck in engineering. Okay, fine. I think we keep this run. This isn't too bad. We can also grab more luck from this. Have a quick roll. What do we got? More luck? Anyway, hello trees. Hello enemies. These enemies aren't too bad, and especially having more turrets and landmines on our side does mean that we can actually cleave our way through them relatively easier than before. Okay, wave 13 went rather well. We have managed to get five crates on this run, so I'm hoping that we actually get something good. A uh, medical turret, there we go. This is something that we'll actually keep. Lucky charm, also good to have luck. And I suppose we can take the mushroom. Fine, okay, we'll, we'll have to keep this run. Not the best, but it is worthwhile. And I'll grab the skull for the engineering. And I'll re-roll this for... Ooh, 16% extra damage. Why not? It's probably worth it. Alright, then let's hit the shop with a re-roll. Oh, and we get the trees! Yes! Okay, this is a good start. Yes, start off of wave 14. We've got some nice trees. We've gotten two crates straight off of the bat, which is very nice. I just got to dodge all of this ranged fire, but provided I can do that, uh, everything should be good. Okay, looks like we're up to about four crates. Okay, three crates, actually. Is that all I'm going to get? Only three crates? Yeah, not the best, but let's see if we've got any good upgrades. Power generator? No, that's useless. And tractor. Okay, all of these are useless. So I will return to the main menu and we'll give this another go. I'll be back in a moment as soon as we've got a good roll on this exit. Right, welcome back to Brotato, where amazingly I've finally got an item I can use. The alien eyes. Once again, similar to turrets, this is an item that I can take back out to the menu and then load back in. And when I do, I will keep these alien eyes, despite them not appearing in my inventory. This is a really, really, really useful ability because it deals a huge amount of damage. Uh, so we'll be naturally taking them and then immediately returning to the main menu and redoing wave 14. But now with the added ability of alien eyes that, as you can see, fly on out of me. And if they hit an enemy, they do a lot of damage. Fantastic stuff. There we go. And as these fights get easier and easier, it becomes simpler to farm for all of these lovely crates. Eventually we will become far too powerful and the game will simply quake before us. Oh my goodness, I think we got a lot of crates from this one. Yep, we got a grand total of five crates. Lovely. Right, we can take the scope, we can skip the sad tomato, we can take the beanie, we can take the white flag, and we'll skip the bait. And then back out to the main menu and let's do this again. I will repeat until we are prosperous. Okay, right, well this one was much, much more effective. We've managed to get six crates this time around, and I've also discovered an additional overpowered item that actually stacks from the crates. And no, it's not these more landmines. 
mind, so that's very nice though. Uh, I've discovered that actually, if we take the burning sausage that allows us to set fire to enemies from a crate, it still persists through waves. As you can see in our items, we have absolutely nothing that could cause enemies to set on fire, and yet when we hit enemies, there is a 25% chance that they actually set on fire. Yet again, even more of these wonderful bonuses that are persisting as we roll back time. Now, for those of you only half watching on your phone whilst you cook a jacket potato or something, allow me to explain why the exploit today is so horrifically overpowered. In the game of Brotato, your enemies are always evolving, and they will out-evolve you. The entire point of constructing a build is to try and find a way to stem the balance of power and potentially overtake your enemies to make the game actually more bearable. Of course, if you don't know what you're doing, there's a good chance you're going to fail. However, with today's strategy, we're able to play the same wave over and over again, allowing us to continuously evolve whilst our enemies stay at the same power level. This gets very cheeky indeed. Uh, and here's the sausage. Uh, we are limited to only four of these, however we can have more because we're picking them up from crates and then technically mentally discarding them. Uh, yeah, it's very strange how that works, but now when we hit enemies we have a 50% chance of setting them on fire, as opposed to just a flat 25. As you can see, these small little orange flames and the hissing sound when we hit an enemy is them being set on fire. But yes, I think I've repeated wave 14 around about five times now and gotten a good array of items from it. It's safe to say things are going rather well. Okay, wave 14 is now complete. I've managed to uh, pick up another turret, uh, some kind of piercing damage, an insanity, uh, alien magic, and I will also run this again now that I've picked up an additional turret. Anyway, we are now doing wave 14 with an additional turret on our side, which is very, very useful indeed. We can now do burn damage when we previously couldn't, and we have those lovely alien eyes. We're pretty much guaranteed between three and six crates, depending on how the wave goes and our luck flows. But as you can imagine, that does make this exploit a fair bit easier to pull off. All right, just two crates this time. Oh, but a landmine. Wonderful, splendid stuff. All right, so that's now another landmine added to the pile. So uh, the wave starts and loads of landmines appear. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, I would never personally carry a landmine in my inventory. So I am not responsible for any illegal acts that are committed using these landmines. But yes, once again, I'll do wave 14 over and over again until hopefully we get a few more turrets. Right, I think we've uh, completed wave 14 as much as I'd like, and we've got a good run of six crates and two level ups. I'm pretty happy to end wave 14 here. Uh, we'll take this gentle alien, this wheelbarrow. Oh, the pocket factory is really good. Uh, the bat's nice, and the sharp bullet can be recycled. I will take the campfire. There we go. All good stuff. Uh, we'll go for the skull upgrade to boost up our engineering. That's very useful. And then I guess re-roll into some... Ooh, speed or luck? Ah, it's gotta be luck. Splendid. Right, I think I am ready for wave 14, so let the fun begin. As we once again attempt to become even more powerful with even more turrets, even more crates, even more loot, and all of that lovely jazzy fun stuff. Now, I've done a good job of uh, basically rolling through the shop, and I think we're in a really, really good spot with our build. Our luck is nice and high, our harvesting is stupidly good, and I have also installed the mod now so that when we do eventually hit wave 20, we will no longer lose harvesting. Now, as you can tell, our character is a lot better, and that's for several reasons. Uh, reason number one, we have a lot more gardens on the map. Uh, reason number two, we have a lot more spawned in items. As you can see, we have managed to store up a huge amount of turrets that will just pop up everywhere. And of course, every time we kill a tree, we get a new turret. Uh, the overall result of this is that I no longer have to fight the enemies, for the world will simply do that on my behalf. It's also a bunch of landmines. Who knows how they got there? Definitely wasn't me. <laughs> but still, already, because our luck stat is so incredibly high, we've already got five crates on wave 17, or make that six, and I can basically complete all of these waves by standing perfectly still, which is very nice indeed. Oh my goodness, and look at that. Is that seven whole crates? I do believe it is. Right, well, I'll take this item, I'll take this item, I'll take this item, I'll take this one, I will recycle this one, I'll take this one. Oh, what turret, lovely. And a second turret, brilliant stuff. Well, isn't that just wonderful? Because now I can return to the main menu, resume, go in once more, and that's two more permanent turrets added to the list. Very jazzy and highly perfectly balanced. Yes, our character, despite it being wave 17 and having pretty much ignored all damage modifiers, we are basically immortal for the sheer quantity of turrets we have supporting us. Alright, I think I'm happy to finish off with wave 17 by picking up 
uh, this lovely crit chance upgrade, which also increases our luck stat, which is very nice. I'm also gonna just try and bank as much money as possible and only buy an item if it's aid, like the Cyber Ball, which is very useful for us. 25% chance to do 309 damage to a random enemy when an enemy dies is just a great item. Right, into wave 18 we go with all of our money saved up and 230 cash in the bank. We're just two rounds away from the final boss, although I won't lie, uh, we should be able to absolutely smash them. <laughs> now, of course, this exploit does work on every difficulty. It does also work on every device, meaning if you're playing this on the Steam Deck, or well, great news, it works. If you're playing this on mobile, which this game now actually has a release of, then yes, it also works. It is very jazzy indeed, and will help you feel like a video game god. How's my harvesting stat doing? Wow, we're up to 2,000. That is um, very silly indeed. Well, and the map is just absolutely coated with either turrets, landmines, or fruit. Ah, what a lovely state of affairs it is. All right, let's grab the lucky charm, let's grab the boiling water, the gnome, the weird food, the medal, the gambling token, the acid, the mastery, and the little muscly dude. Unfortunately, no actual permanents in that round, but that's fine. We'll just simply roll again and go for more. All right, I'll see you once I have completed wave 18 many, many times. Now, we have been able to add a huge amount of uh, these eyes and gardens and turrets so that, yes, generally speaking, we are more powerful than ever before. I do also want to hammer on the importance of the harvesting statistic because basically each enemy drops one material when we defeat them. However, my harvesting statistic is 2,500, meaning I effectively defeat 2,500 enemies worth of material every single round without having to do anything. Anyway, let's pick up all of these wonderful bonuses. Anyway, there we go, that's the end of the wave, and oh my, we're up to 3,000 harvesting. Very nice indeed. All right, let's grab the gummy berserker. No, we don't take the coffee. The coffee goes straight into the bloody bin. Oh, incendiary turret, thank you. Baby gecko, thank you. Dynamite, yes. Compass, yes. Cyclops worm, sure, why not? And then, oh, fingers level four. Speed plus 9% is very nice. And then we'll grab the nose upgrade, because it is important to have a large noz. And then roll here, and elemental damage is very nice. Nice, there we go. Splendid stuff indeed. Right, well, we only have the final boss wave of wave 20 to go, so we might as well grab uh, the peacock for plus 100% experience gain. Why not? That'll be good fun. Uh, then we can grab critical damage chance, roll here. Right, you know what? Let's just go straight into wave 20. So there is going to be a big boss in this wave, and the wave ends as soon as we defeat them. So here comes in the boss, and then in come in our turrets. Um, so we're going to see how well this guy does. Uh, he appears to be doing... Um, oh, he's dead. Oh, he, he tragically died. Well, he drops a crate, so that's nice. <laughs> oh, the poor boss. But yes, as you can see, uh, we've placed down an immense quantity of farms and landmines and turrets, and oh my goodness, the map is just an absolute atrocious mess. But it's a jazzy atrocious mess. We might even get some level ups off of this thanks to our harvesting. Uh, I guess we'll see. Yep, there we go. Harvesting is up to 3,555. I suppose I could reload this wave over and over again to get better items, but no, we will complete wave 20 in one go. We'll take Grind's Magical Leaf, we'll take the Duct Tape, we'll take the Turret, we'll take the Claw Tree, we'll take the Recycling and the Dynamite and the Mutation and more Duct Tape. Splendid stuff. I could take a Scythe that does 1000 damage, but means I take 3 damage per second. I mean, this would probably kill absolutely everything, and it is a lifesteal. Oh, why not? Screw it. We'll get rid of one of our Pruners. It's not even like we're using them for anything other than the Garden, so I'll take a Scythe. Right, we come to our final wave, Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, wave 30 is about to be upon us. I have spent approximately the last entire day re-rolling this character over and over again to build the most horrifically broken build possible. Our harvesting statistic is up to 14,000. We have 155,000 material to spend. It is safe to say that our character has ascended into the heavens. We have become stupidly overpowered and it is magnificent indeed. There is just one minor problem. I did accidentally grab this weird ghost in the crates just now, and this is going to reset my HP to 1 at the start of the next wave, which is very, very bad indeed, because I have 8,000 HP, and it is very important. It is mostly important for these lovely alien eyes that I have. I have about 20 of them, only 7 of them display here, but basically every 3 seconds I shoot out a lot of these, and if they hit an enemy, they deal 51,000 damage, which as you can imagine, is enough to kill everything in this entire game. Oh my god. I just lost, didn't I? Of course I just lost. I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh my 
god, it was the stupid ghost. Because I started the wave with one HP, every second I take three damage from the scythe. So I spawned in, the scythe ticked, and I died. Oh my god. <laughs> No, this run was so stupidly overpowered and it was defeated by a weird looking ghost. Oh, I'm so silly. Oh, I'm so annoyed. But still, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a absolutely perfectly balanced look into Brotato. And once again, I have learned the lesson of my hubris. No matter how horrifically overpowered I become, all it takes is one weird little ghost and everything can come crashing down. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, then subscribe. You legally must do it now. If you don't, I'm going to be offloading 700 landmines onto your house. Trust me, there's nothing I can do. I generate one landmine every nanosecond. They've got to go somewhere. And Swindon can only fit so many. As always, thank you for watching. A huge thank you to our lovely channel members and Patreons for funding these videos. And we'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a lovely day and goodbye for now.